Hello and welcome back to the Archeria B3V tutorial series. Today we're going to be having a look at MIDI, macros and automation. Now the reason why the organ is looking slightly smaller today is because we need to click this settings cog to open this extra panel and this is where we get access to all our MIDI stuff. We're going to click the MIDI tab and if I open this MIDI config window you can see we've got um, saveable configuration options. So that's pretty straightforward what empty means. But default um, gives you some really useful out of the box settings like if you want to connect your rotary speaker to your modulation wheel for instance. But today I'm going to show you how to map stuff um, to your um, either MIDI controls or automation. MIDI first and to help me out with this I'm going to open my modulation page and I'm going to assign MIDI controls to two of the settings in the mix options. So we've got background noise and we've also got the key click volume. This is the adjust that little tap on the key. So the task is to automate those two controls so that I can turn knob on one of my physical um, hardware devices and have these controls change in real time. The first way I'm going to show you to do it is using MIDI and we'll use the background noise as the example here. In my MIDI tab, I simply click the learn button. Then everything that isn't currently assigned turns purple. You can see some of this red stuff has been assigned. These are the upper draw bars that you can see here, uh, but all the purple stuff is free to, um, to assign. You can overwrite the red stuff as well. If I click on the master volume, I do have the option to set it to any control that I want, but that's not what I want to do. I want to select my background noise. So I'm going to single click in it. And now it's created a new entry in my MIDI map. And the next thing that I need to do is move the physical controller that I want to map to that control. So I'm going to map CC 109 on my machine. Once it's mapped, click the learn button again and we're back in standard operation mode. Now I move the controller on my machine and you can see the background noise fade away. Now there is a second means by which you can um, change these controls. At the moment that's called absolute mode, which means if I change the background noise, I've just clicked on it with my mouse to change it to a different value. The moment I move the control, it's going to remember where its previous value was and it'll jump back there. So it's about 0.2 something. And there we go, back again. You can override that behavior to make it a relative operation instead. What you'd need to do there is right click on the control itself, select relative, and you also need to be able to control, uh, configure your controller itself. So here's the button switch to relative offset, and then decide how big your steps and increments want to be. All of this is kind of beyond this particular tutorial, but just to show you that we've got that extra option. So now if I increase the background noise and move the controller down, the controller picks up from wherever my option currently was. This is really for if you're jumping between presets, um, every time you move one of these controller knobs a very tiny amount, it would jump arbitrarily to whatever physical value that controller was set to. So it's just a, a quick intro to the difference between absolute and relative controls. I tend to stick to absolute more often than not. It's, it's less trouble. Relative controls care about where the parameter was when you first entered the options. It, it's more fiddly than it's worth in my opinion. So I'm, I'm a fan of just absolute. It's nice and simple, simple is best. Okay, that's the background noise set. Now for key click, I'm gonna use automation instead. Now this is a very door specific thing. We're in Cubase here. So I'm gonna show you how Cubase does it. I've got these controls on the inspector called quick controls. I can turn them on I can select a quick control slot and simply move the key click option. And now you can see that Cubase has learned the key click volume. I've got different um, knobs on my, this time it's my Native Instruments Complete keyboard that control my quick controls. So 
I prefer quick controls are the best means of automation. If you're using Cubase, track quick controls are completely awesome because you get to see key click volume. You can visually see in the inspector all the time exactly what that value is. I love that user interface feature. I think it's awesome. But if you don't have that, MIDI CC will work. Just bear in mind that these two things kind of live uncomfortably side by side. It's possible to map the same control to both automation and MIDI CC. And then you've got two different knobs on two different controllers pointing at the same thing and you're likely to end up with conflicts. Don't unnecessarily complicate your life. You can also see that each of these MIDI values have a minimum and maximum. If I set the maximum of background noise to somewhere around 0.3, it'll mean no matter what I do with the knob, it's never going to let me have too much background noise. It's not going to become offensive. So now I can turn the knob up as far as I want and I can never go past 0 0.299, turn it all the way down and we get to zero. Still got the ability to manually interact with it as well. You can also have high to low. So with the upper drawbar settings, you can see the minimum is eight and the maximum is zero. Now I don't currently have any controllers mapped to 85, but that's no problem. I can simply overwrite it. Single click on the upper drawbar, move the knob. I want to take over control, come back out of learn mode. Now that I've just overwritten that CC control, annoyingly, can you see that it's inverted? The minimum and maximum values. It's a matter of moments to reset them back, but it is mildly irritating. So now when I um, turn my knob anti-clockwise, the drawbar goes up and clockwise reduces the drawbar, makes it operate the same as all the others. And then we can right click, delete, get rid of that parameter entirely. So that's how to configure individual controllers, map one hardware controller to one function in the organ. But macros take that concept a step further. You've got four macro controls and they're called brightness, drive, time and vibrato, but they are just placeholders. That's just text. I can double click in that name and call the control Bob if I want. And now Bob is going to perform some operations. These are all the commands that the Bob knob is going to do. So basically, when I turn this macro, you're going to see all of these draw bars move. But you'll see them move in a pretty weird way. Watch this. OK, so something a bit weird is going on to make all those draw bars behave in such an odd fashion. Well, when we open each one of these little um, drop down options, you can see that we've got these complex graphs that basically stipulate for each point on the controller curve from 0 to 127, what do, what do you want to do? So not only are we controlling upper draw bar 16 with this macro knob, but we're controlling it in this unusual fashion. And each one of the draw bars is configured with its own modulation curve. So basically when I turn the knob, you can see the vertical line indicating the current setting of the macro knob. Different draw bars are going to respond differently. Now, from my own perspective, that's as complicated as I want things to get, but you can actually push it uh, one level further by specifying different minimums and maximums for each of the ranges. What I want to do is make this modulation curve only operate over half the range. So I'm going to set the maximum to 0.5. Now you can do this with left and right mouse clicks. If I left click to get me most of the way there and then switch to right click, you get very fine control. That's true for all Archuria plugins. So now this modulation curve is going to operate over half the range. Turn the macro knob all the way down. So just concentrate on the two foot draw bar which is this one here. And then at the maximum extent, it's, it's traveled halfway. In terms of editing these um, individual windows themselves, you can pick these nodes up and move them and you can see exactly what's gonna happen with the modulation curve. You can also right click on any of the nodes to delete them. 
Now, other features in other Archuria products that use this similar kind of interface have greater flexibility, but with these macro controls, that's basically the limit of, of what you can do with them. We can add as many of these new things as we want. There is a limit, I think it was 32 if I remember rightly, but it, it's far more than you need, quite frankly. Just like when we were in the MIDI page earlier, you can assign any number of commands uh, to your macros. So if we put it in learn mode, uh, this is the lower manual that's currently um, unassigned. I can add any number of these in. And you can see they've now been added to the macro. And you can also assign automation to the macro control itself. This is a little bit clunky. You can't do it from inside the macro page. If you pop back over to your MIDI page, enter learn mode, you'll see that the macro knobs turn purple. And now you can click it move your MIDI controller and the macro itself is now controlled by my MIDI controller and you can see all the drawbars, you can see the poor old two foot drawbar having a very unhappy time. You do generally tend to find pretty standard uh, functions being applied to this, so the drive you can hear the drive kicking in time is set to uh, the attack time so I've got quite a quick attack time and there's the slower attack time coming in obviously I'm operating on the upper keyboard only at the moment but we've got controls over both keyboards that stands to reason and vibrato is setting both the chorus type and the chorus amount so watch the chorus knob turn So it's turning it on and then rotating it. I think that'll do us for today. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.